Hello again everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I've actually been up to some useful stuff recently and made some what I think is some quite nice progress. So as you can see here I've got a, a rocket silo that's got loads of these, they kind of look like some sort of green green drinks don't they, the way they um this little pot with some with some goo in it and yeah looks absolutely delicious <laughs> so what i've done here is i've built up that um vitamelange processing facility that i've been talking about in the previous episode so i'm now out here on on tulip this is that that planet where the green stuff grows and there's enormous quantities about here the mine i've set up one mine it's got 30 million left in it there's another patch right next to it, 10 11 6 million 20, th th almost 30 million, almost 30 million. So there's loads of this stuff around, so I don't need to worry about running out of it. And what's quite nice is I've got I've got a train bringing it in as normal, and then here I've dropped down the um, the blueprint that I was showing you last time. So we've got the the vitamin ore coming in at the top here. It's then being pulverized by well these pulverizers. Although I I did run out of those. I don't know whether I miscounted or whether I didn't get everything in the rocket properly, but somehow. I didn't bring all of the stuff along that I meant to, so there's a few pulverizers missing, but I don't actually care because it's producing it at such a rate that it's it's not a problem. Uh, then that's the feeding it onto this belt that brings it round here, and it splits here to go into all these furnaces, uh, not furnaces, what's it called? Yeah, industrial furnaces, and that roasts it and turns it into this darkest stuff here in the middle, it's the uh, the roast vitamelange. Feeds that along a belt, brings it along here, goes through these assembly machines that turn it into Vitamelange spice apparently um, and then that belt also then loops around here and there's even more machines down here to do it and that means that from all of this stuff I'm, produ I'm bringing in one blue belt's worth of Vitamelange ore and I'm bringing out about it was about one and a bit maybe one and a third belts of um, of the actual uh, spice the stuff that I'm taking off to the off to space to be yet uh, to be processed and dealt with up there um, and this, so this, yeah, this entire area up here across the top produces that one, uses up that one belt, and in, 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 and that produces about just as I said, just over one blue belt of um, of the of the spice. And down here, I've got a second copy of it because I thought, well, let's have a reasonable amount. Uh, but it filled the rocket up really, really quickly. So, I mean, it it doesn't stack particularly high; it only stacks up to 50. And unlike a lot of the other products, you get more well at least with the uh, productivity modules i put in here you get out more than, than you put in so it's it just filled the rocket up really really quickly um as you can see as always i've um i filled all the machines packed full of uh, productivity modules so here we're getting a 32 percent bonus so for every one piece that goes in or for every one time the machine runs you get one and a third loads worth of stuff and again the same here except i've got even more i think this is a Whereas at 40%, so you get even more, nearly one and a half times out of there. So it multiplies through, multiplies through, and in the one, two, three, three stages it goes through, that means I'm getting out, and I'm not going to do the maths in my head, but I'll put the numbers up on screen here. Um, so it's, it's a bit more, yeah, you get out more than you, you would normally. And as usual, I've put in the, uh, the beacons in here that are full of um, speed modules and, and efficiency modules, and that brings the speed these things run up, run at, back to almost normal speed these ones are uh where is the speed? yeah these are running at normal speed so the the the, the four um productivity modules are cancelled out by the four speed modules we've got slightly more over here so it's running at 20 percent slower than normal but never mind and we've then got the efficiency modules in to pull the power consumption down so instead of being well i dread to imagine what it would be but this, this is then brought down to um only a, a mere plus 360 percent of normal power usage <laughs> oh dear that said, power hasn't actually been really been a problem. Well, I I had a little bit of a problem very very early on, but that was due to due to some issues with my uh, nuclear power down here. So it turned out I I'd been uh, turning the turning the reactors off here at about 100,000 steam, I think it was. So these these tanks had a little bit in, sort of enough that it was dribbling back slowly into these into into the turbines, but not not so that it was running at prop, not, not so it was properly pressurized and running flat out. So that was causing some issues and, and some brownouts. Um, so I've tweaked that. We're now triggering at I think I think I think I put it up to 500,000 um, steam. So, but that's across all of these tanks and all of these tanks. So between them, that, that's still it still means they're, sh they're, they're they're shutting off quite a lot of the time. So as you can see, these tanks are actually they're all basically full. Um, so it's probably not being as efficient as it might be. I might have gone too far the other way, but I'd rather have that and uh, and and have it always working, even if it means I'm using up a bit more uranium than I otherwise would. And so I thought, 
because I was having trouble, I thought I'd put in a second one. I don't think this is actually required. I think the um, I think one one quad furnace, uh, quad reactor, is more than capable of producing enough power. But I put a second one in just to make sure. Um, oh, there's some pipes missing down here. I should go and fix those before I leave. Um, so this was the original setup I had, where we're um, so it was bringing bringing in all the various different things: the oil, the iron, the bitumen, melange, stone, and coal. And then we're bringing in uh, copper and vulcanite and uranium by delivery cannon. And oh, okay, this is. <laughs> and then in order to make this work, I'm just feeding the iron through the delivery ch cannon chest and into here, which is a bit silly, but uh, you know, if it ain't if it ain't broke, I, I don't fix it. <laughs> uh, so we're then smelting that into the iron. So yada yada yada. It's the same thing. I've, I've talked about this before. We're making and then we're make, doing all the oily stuff. And this, all of this. All of this part is to make the uh, was to make delivery cannon capsules, which we've stopped using. But I'm kind of lazy, so I've just left all of this in place. I couldn't bother to come along and rip it up. That said, I might come along and nick these pulverizers now because they could be used somewhere else. They'd be very useful. It's also keeping the um, the meteor defenses running as well. So I'm going to yeah definitely going to leave that much in. And six guns seems to be enough. But I might see if I've got any more and put them in if I can. Uh, because, you know, you can never have enough. And there was a little bit of damage here. I can't remember when it happened, but there was enough that I think it's probably worth taking a look at. So yeah, I'll come along I'll come along and pull those pulverizers up and, and uh, to reuse them. As I say, we've got a vitamin lounge, um mine here. It's got oodles in it. Standard LTN type setup here. So we've got uh, various trains and a fluid strain as well. And then up here, I've done more or less the same thing again. So I've got... But because I'm not making the... Um, delivery cannon capsules because I'm using rockets I don't need a lot of the other inputs so all we've got coming in here is the vitamelange ore and the oil and the oil as before is coming down the pipe here it's being turned it's being uh, purified over here or refined over here rather into the um, gas light and heavy and then we've got the, a string of the um, what do you call it uh, fuel refineries down here turning that into liquid fuel that we're using to fuel up this rocket uh, and now the rocket isn't uh, the rocket fueling up the rocket is taking rather a long time um which is done now actually so we can we can we can leave fairly soon so we'll be filling up these tanks now so so hopefully that means the next rocket will be more or less ready to go straight away but it does take 50, about 50,000 uh, because we're, this is this is an in-system rocket so it's not going particularly far that said with the amount with how far i expect this vital melange to go i don't think we're going to be needing an enormous number of rockets for this but yeah so i think it's going to be one of those cases where we'll drop bring in two rockets one to fill up the landing pad and then dump into the warehouse and then another one to refill the landing pad and then it'll be a very long time until another rocket comes along and the interesting thing is we can we can the quite nice thing is if we look at the um, norvis space station you can have a look along here and you can see well ignoring these ones because we're not using them yet they're for the f future expansion I can look at these and I can go. Okay, this one there's a, there's a problem with the uranium two three five because there isn't an icon on the on the cargo landing pad, and that means it's completely empty, which means it should be requesting a rocket, but isn't getting one. So yeah, completely empty. This one's fine. There's a problem with glass as well, which is interesting because I had the I had the opposite problem recently that there was too much glass in the system, and it wasn't being and I was, yeah I had a shortage of it. There's still twenty two thousand here, but that's not a huge amount. That's like a third of a a warehouse so we're probably going to need to have a look at that um, and the glass is mostly being made as, sort of as a byproduct on Kothar and on Henkesesui I think with the the iridium and one of the other things the processing there that uh, turns turns stone in produces stone as part of the processing and then we turn that into glass and which, which we can then ship off into space so that's obviously not running fast enough there's something clearly something that's using up a lot of glass and we're not we're just not keeping up with it and I think what it is, is a lot of it's going to Norvis and being turned into these substrate things. So I might need to stop it going to Norvis. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to prioritise the, um, the the landing pads and say, I wanted to go to space unless there's an overflow, in which case I wanted to go to Norvis. So LTN stations, you can prioritise. You can put in um, different priorities on different stations to say, yes, I want the train to always pick up from this station by preference. But rockets, I don't think you can. So then we go along here, stone, iridium, um, vitamin lange is of course a shortage because I haven't started delivering it yet. Um, iridium is a bit low, but it hasn't actually become an official shortage yet. Then down here, these are all fine, these are all... Blue circuits, not so fine, so blue circuits is another one I need to look at. Everything else, copper, steel, holmium, 
low density structure. Yeah, these have all got stuff in them, so these are all running absolutely fine. So I'm not wor not worried about those. So it's just the uranium and the the blue circuits that I'm, I'm I'm concerned about at the moment. So let's take a look at Norvis. Now uranium here, we've got we've got a full rocket of it. So there's some, obviously something here. Yeah, so it's told to go to Nor Norvis orbit. Nor no, Norvis orbit U two three five drop, but it, but it's set still set to manual, and that's probably because the first one I launched, I launched only half full because I just wanted to get some up there and it's being pro produced so slowly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say launch on cargo full. The rocket will more or less immediately launch like this. Head up into space and it can unload up there. So that's that's should have solved the problem. What I think is what's quite nice here is you notice this inserter is going nice and quickly so it's loading in all of the um, the rocket components to make the rocket but these ones are all waiting because I've set them so that I don't ever get in the position where the, the silo is so full that you can't load the stuff it's supposed to be carrying I've set these inserters not to load until there's an actual full-on rocket available so as you can see we're here we're at 80, 80 of them done 83 84 87. so it's nearly there and once that finishes and the rocket fuel's filling up very quick. There we go. These start to pass through as well because now there's an actual rocket ready. And that, so I've I've had problems in the past where it, it's just it's, it's failed to load the rocket, it failed to build the rocket because the rocket has ended up complete. All of these slots have ended up completely full of whatever the rocket's supposed to be transporting, and then we've not been able to get the rocket parts in in order to build the final rocket, which is kind of silly, but it is a thing that can happen if you're not careful. So that's that one sorted. The other problem was blue circuits. Now I did I looked into this earlier, and this is this is a bit funny. So I've got green and red here. What I think happened was I repurposed this space and this station to be for bringing glass in when I had too much glass on Henkesesu or Kothar or somewhere I can't remember where. So this is where the blue circuit should be, but there isn't a station for it. So what I need to do is make a copy of one of these stations like this. In fact, let's copy the whole... Ooh, I need to be careful here, because if you accidentally copy the um, uh, the constant combinator for one of these, then you can end up reprogramming the station and having all kinds of problems. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to delete the combinator from there so it doesn't build that just yet, because I don't want it to put that in and order lots and lots of the wrong thing. That's always funny. Uh, and by funny, I mean frustrating. And then I can just link this up like that. And I'm also going to need another rocket launch pad. So over here I shall copy. Now these come in pairs because of the way I've piped the, the fluids together. So I'm going to need to copy two of these. I'll get rid of the radar afterwards because I, I won't need that. And I'm leaving a, what's that, a two, two space? Looks like a two space. Maybe it's a three. Yeah, it looks more, no, it looks closer. And that should, yes, that's lined up with the other belts I put in. So that's good. That's in the right place. So I can put that there. Now I can just leave it and the the, the robots will build all of that for me while I'm um, off doing other things. So I'm, I can mostly ignore this now, which is quite nice. I like, I do I do very much like logistics bots. They make everything so much easier. Um, I can't see where these belts are supposed to be going. Never mind. I'll finish that up once the uh, once that much of it has been built. So things, yeah, things are going pretty well, I think. Um... This, as I said, this rocket is now completely ready to go. We've got this. This I, I copied and pasted this from um, another planet. I think it was probably Kothar, and that's why I've got an input for cryonite here. But I've removed the uh, the landing pad, so we're not going to get any here because we don't need it. We do need vulcanite for roasting the uh, vitamelange, so that's coming in here in, in the standard way. Now this is another one that's having problems, and if we have a look on Ganymede, this is the fueling problems. I've been, and actually, it's a, it's a supply problem of vulcanite as well. So I am aware that I need to. Um, build more vulcanite mines and I think I need to do more rocket fuel as well um, and there's a bit of other defense repairs and things I need to do so this is this is producing vulcanite at a reasonable rate I think I oh know these rockets are just are still filling up and they're also filling up with fuel and as I've discussed before um, Ganymede is a very very long way away it's in a different star system so it takes half a million liquid rocket fuel to get a rocket from here back to everything else which is really really expensive and kind of sucks I'm have been wondering whether wondering whether I should redesign things that on and go back to Myokin and try and use that one again because it's it's much closer but there's no water so I can't run a nuclear power plant there so that's basically why I came here and then after I came here I realized just how far it is and how 
how much of everything is, is uh, required in order to just yeah how, how much how much rocket fuel is required to get back from it and also of course on the flip side how much rocket fuel is required to get me out there and any with any other supplies i need if i want to build the place up a bit um we're going okay for rocket parts here uh, so that's that's okay for now but again that landing pad is empty um, I think I just don't have enough spare rocket parts lying around to, 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 to be restocking all of these yet. But we'll get that. And the rocket parts just go round and round and it, it should be fine. Okay, so that's that. Back here, one of the things I have done... Yes, yeah, so we've got the rocket parts coming in here, as I said. Um, there's still a few in here, so I'm not expecting the rocket to land here yet. One of the things I have done that I've not done anywhere else yet, but will probably do on every planet I travel out to if I remember, is I put in this warning speaker here and that's linked up to the belt here so if we ever run out of rocket parts this will sound an alarm and tell me that I've run out of rocket parts on Tulip and the reason but reasoning behind that is basically essentially it's so that I um because I don't if 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 I, if, if one of these one of these places runs out I'm not going to know about it until it's until it's too late and I realize everything is ground to a halt somewhere else and I trace it back and eventually realize that there's a, a shortage of parts somewhere so this sort of thing should help with that Okay, I think I'm now ready to leave this planet. I've had a bit of a look through the through the chests of stuff up here, and this this station was for bringing all of the supplies that I brought in, dropped off at this rocket pad landing pad here. I then dumped them all into a train and carried them all up here so that I could, so that my bots could build all this up, and that went really really well, really quickly. I'm very pleased with how 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 smoothly that that all worked, and of course with how uh, how quickly this rocket filled up. So we want to go to any landing pad that's called Vitamelange Drop and we want to launch automatically when the cargo is full and of course the cargo is now full because we've been sitting there waiting and again I've done the control system where we don't load any of the, the Vitamelange Spice in until, the, until there's a complete rocket there so that'll never run out and now I can head off to uh, off into space and this should drop in neatly here there we go. We have the Vitamelange be, uh, being the spice being emptied out into this into this warehouse. Rocket parts go onto the belt up here, and the rocket control uh, rocket cargo pod thing will also go out onto here as well, and it just be all be dealt with nicely. All of these parts then flow over into this rocket over here, and the idea of this one is it it's a place for all of the rocket parts to collect. So they they'll be brought round here. Any individual parts will be loaded into the rocket if they're required. Um, and then, if they're not, if it's got up to 100, then it will load them, in, put them into this machine, which compresses them into the into the stacked ones, and then we load them into the rocket here. And then once this fills up, it'll launch it off to wherever it's needed. So any any landing pad called Rocket Parts Drop, um, and that's how we keep all of the other landing pads around the system um, all loaded up and and ready to go. And I can, if if necessary, I can then use one of the ones. I can launch one from Norvis if I need to top it up, because of course this process isn't 100% efficient. We do lose a few. Uh, rocket cargo pods each. Um, I can't remember what point I've got the rockets to so far. Here we go. Reus reusability, 68%. So we get back just over two thirds of the of the rocket parts we use. So eventually, I, so I do will eventually work through them all and theoretically run out. Um, I am bu building them on Norvis, of course, so I can then ship them back out to wherever they're needed. But in theory, there should be almost enough coming from here. But it's something it's something I need to keep an eye on. Uh, I wonder where this one's trying to go. That's trying to clearly trying to go to Ganymede, because, but looking at looking at that, it's almost 500,000 fuel. So it's, yeah, that's going to go all the way out to Ganymede with all these parts when it's once it's full. And maybe I should go with it and set up some more mines and things. But I think I probably need to go to Ganymede from Norvis because I'm going to want to stock up on miners and and all that other stuff. I, that said. Ganymede has basically all of the resources on it. We've got we've got uranium, we've got copper, we've got stone, we've got coal, we've got iron, we've got, we've got everything. I've, I've even set up core mining here just to get the last little... Oh, that's where I get copper from. The core mining makes a copper. But generally, I've got everything I could need here. So I could come out here, build up miners here, and just fix everything up. From, um, but I'd have to build up a lot of the, sort of the basic base stuff up here, and I can't really be bothered, to be honest. So I'm not going to... Okay, so I've not done anything in space since the last episode. Uh, we did get hit by a um, coronal mass ejection, but fortunately all it damaged was some um, solar panels up here, so I don't really mind too much. And it was the old cheap ones as well, so yeah, really, really don't care. Um, 
I feel quite lucky about that. There was one one hit here, and then there was four more sort of scattered at fairly 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 long way away from what all the stuff I've actually built. But I I was very worried I was going to have one just plow straight through the middle of one of my science production areas and just get and just destroy all of the expensive machinery. But fortunately, that didn't happen. So now that I'm up here, I can start going through all of these messages and finding out the things that I've I've been running out of in the um, in space like. Uh, Broad energy catalogs, for example, apparently not being built quickly enough. Satellite telemetry appears to be a problem, and I'm not sure why, because I've seen lots of rockets launching from uh, from Norvis, but perhaps they're just maybe they haven't been actually. Uh, maybe oh sorry, I've seen lots of the um, the satellite launches from Norvis, but maybe they've just not maybe we've just not had a cargo rocket come up here yet, so we're we're short of these, and there's not enough for, to fill up an entire rocket there yet, because we need a thousand up uh, train, sorry, because we need a thousand. So that's something I'll have a look at. In fact, let's let's do that now, because I want to talk about Norvis anyway. And that's this rocket over here. So we've got, yeah, this big, big rocket here, ready to go. It's got, okay, it's got quite a lot in it, but there's also a lot of space left. So there's a lot of things that we haven't, that we need to get. That we, <laughs> there's a lot more space for stuff in space. Did that make sense? <laughs> I don't think it did. There's, there's, um, now that I'm bringing all the raw materials up individually, there's a load of space waiting in this rocket. That I'm not filling up with things like coal anymore, so these rockets are taking off a lot less frequently, and that means we're just a bit. We've run well. We've run out of these things, the uh, telemetries, and the, and there's not a huge amount of science in here as well. So maybe maybe I'll just boost some of these things up and get a bit more supplies and things in space just to make sure I don't run out of stuff. So that's a possibility. I'll have a think about that. The other thing I've been doing down on Norvis is I've finally finished this expansion out to the east. So as you can see, we've got this this wall now. Well, there, there was that bit in there before. We've got the lake coming around here. Got the wall across here, lake, wall, lake, wall, lake, wall. And then I've put in this one and this one. So now this whole area is enclosed. Yes, there are still some red specks in here, but these are all worms. So they're basically as long as I don't go it as long as I ignore them ignore them they'll they won't come out and attack me because they can't do anything they're just static they sit there they can't expand on their own they need the actual biters to do that so these are I mean they make a lot of noise but they're basically harmless um, as long as you don't go in there and start harassing them <laughs> I've also put in a few extra copper mines so this one's actually it's now filled up and there's no tr I wonder whether there's no train coming because it's broken or whether because I've got enough copper or <laughs> I wouldn't like to say actually um, this one stopped as well, so I suspect it probably is just now that I've, I've caught up with the copper demand. And it was iron that was really short, but that seems to have caught up as well. So having slapped down some extra mines, we've got an iron one there, we've got a copper one there, copper up there, copper down here. I haven't numbered these very well, but it, it doesn't actually matter at the moment whether, the, whether I've got duplicate numbers in there. LTN can deal with it quite happily. It's only if I try and send a train there manually that it'll have a problem. I also put in some extra iron mines over here. This is quite nice. I was able to more or less repurpose some existing mines. That's why this looks a little bit weird and goes over to the other side of the, the rails and why these two are quite a long way away from their solar panels. Um, these aren't perfect. Uh, these, the solar is not actually capable of running the mine flat out. For, um, uh, or rather, the solar, the solar is capable of it, but it's not then capable of saving up enough power in the accumulators to keep them running overnight. But, as you can see, that isn't actually a problem. Um, we've got enough iron now that it's it, it's caught up, so I think we're okay. Um, there's also a few of the yeah, oh sorry, there's there's a there's a copper station running away quite happily. Um, I've also been round and ripped up a few of the old stations, so we've got random bits of track going out like this with nothing on the end of them. So there used to be a mine in here. I've, you can tell by the way I've just ripped up all the trees from this area. Um, <laughs> so I've, I've, but I've pulled pulled that one up because it because all all the ore had gone from it, well except for that four four thousand three hundred there. Um, and I've gone around, I've tidied most of them up. There's still a few left um, that, that, that need clearing up. But, I mean, I say need clearing up. It's, it's not actually doing any harm having this here. It's just also not doing any good. It's just some, some solar panels and some miners all tied up doing doing nothing. <laughs> but, it, yeah, it doesn't matter. I put in another uranium mine as well, because that was, a, that was a, very much a problem. Oh, yeah, as you can see, I don't actually have any of the good solar panels down here. So, yeah, uranium was a problem, but now I've got that one filled up. And presumably if I look up here here at the uranium processing yeah the station's full the, all the belts coming out of the station are full so i'm happy with that there's a decent trickle of the um dark uranium coming out here and all of these all of these machines here are running which is the whole point and so we're making we're making the 235 at a decent rate so that's all working nicely being fed down here into the train which will eventually 
when it gets up to, I don't know how many thousand, um, probably 20,000, uh, nearly there, we'll pick it up and bring it over to the rocket silos over here and we can then load this rocket up in our circuits. We can then load the... the... <laughs> I can't find it. This one. Why, why are you wrong? There we go, let's fix that. Um, and they'll load, yeah, then we can load this this rocket up again. And, uh, and well, it's got 45,000 in it already, that's not too bad. Uh, it's nearly full, actually. Um, yeah, we can load all of this up again and get another rocket ready to go. So, presumably, if I look at uh, Norvis orbit again, we'll see that we do now have uranium's up here. Yeah, we've now got enough uranium. There's 15,000 in, the, in the landing pad, so we don't, we're not waiting for another rocket to come up at the moment. So, yes. That's been, I think, it's been quite productive. Now that I've got the um, Vitamelange Spice coming in and being and landing in this in this uh, place up here, I can now start working on biological science and get that up and running again. So I think, well, I don't know. I mean, I was going to say I think that'll be my next task. It'll, I may well do my usual thing and just ask ask um, ask the chat on my next stream what they think I should do next. So um, as you can see from the um, f from the diagram here. Um, well, we can we can see that I've done the all as you, you probably hopefully remember I've done the first two of each of um, energy, astro and material. I now need to do so. I now well I, I have the choice. I can either do a third tier of one of those, or I can do the first tier, second tier of uh, biological, and just so I'll see where, what I work through. There are a couple of little things I do need to do while I'm up here, and I'll probably get those done before the next stream actually. And one of them is get a. Um, a drop-off station for the rocket science that's being created here so that can be taken over to here unloaded on a station probably about here or maybe no there isn't room in here somewhere around here prob probably down here or maybe opposite it uh, and then we can stick that in down whichever belt it is and get that flowing so we can get science running again because as you can see here we're, this is actually going quite well we've got enough of we've got Obviously enough of the Norvian sciences because they're, they're just made in bulk down on the planet. They're easy. Then we've got quite a lot. Of, we've got plenty of the Astro 1 and 2 coming through in that there's these belts are full. So that's definitely plenty. We've got a decent amount of Energy 1 and 2. The Energy 2 isn't quite so... Well, actually, no, that's just the, the rate this, this can think and unload at. It's, it's dumping them out as fast as it can. It's backed, and it's backed up out here. So that's fine. Uh, material 1 and 2. Again, they're absolutely fine. Uh, biological 1, there's... At least there's, there's some of those in the system, so they're getting passed around as a, quite happily. So yeah, this is all going pretty well so far. And if we look over here, you can see yes, the, the those three are all um, nice and backed up. So this is, yeah, I'd say this is going well. I'm um, very pleased with the with the with the, with, the, with the way this is progressing. And I would have loads of science being done, but without the rocket science, I can't actually do any of it. So so that's yeah, that's going to definitely be top of the list to fix. And then well we'll uh, we'll see what I feel like doing next. So. Join me in the next episode where I'll um, have done lots of maybe maybe you've done lots of squishy biological stuff, but as I say, that's up to chat. If you want to come along and um, be part of that decision, well, it's um, I, do, I, I stream Factorio every um, Factorio Space Exploration every Wednesday evening. Uh, that's UK time, of course. So yeah, do come along and join me for that. Um, also. Uh, we do Industrial Revolution on mon Monday evenings. So that's another good one to watch. Uh, that's with that's me and some friends. So there's sort of the the arguments and the discussions and the sending Mike off to do a, to be a, to be a, a meat shield. That's all, <laughs> all, all important roles. Um, and then of course there's the uh, GTA videos as well. I, uh, I but I know there's a bit less overlap between the uh, the Factorio fans and the GTA fans. But yeah, well I I think it's fun anyway. So I'm going to keep doing those. And uh, of course there'll be more videos of me doing more and more of this so i hope we'll see you next time as always thanks for watching and let me know what you think i should be doing or if i've made any horrible mistakes that i haven't noticed <laughs> see you next time